Hi and welcome to this video. This is the part two in the series of working with text files within Power BI using Power Query. So if you have been watching, so if you've watched the part one, then you're ready to go. If you haven't, then go and watch the part one and be up to this point and then you can follow along this part two. I have, I'll include a link somewhere on the screen so you can just click on it and go and watch the part one and also include a link in the description as well for the part one so you can just watch that download the relevant files prepare your files up to this point and then follow along with this part two in this video what we're going to do is we're going to recap uh, what we did in the part one and then we're going to look at what we're going to do in this part two so let's get started hi my name is Gurpreet and at BI with Gurpreet, my mission is to help you learn and master the necessary skills and have the knowledge to launch a career within business intelligence successfully. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of what we did in the last video. So we had the text file which contained the sales data for January 2019 for ABC Electronics. This file and the data within this file had multiple issues with it in terms of these extra header rows, repeating headers, blank rows, and then the dates being formatted in the US format and all those things. So we learned how to tackle that and have a clean set of data ready for January 2019. Now in this video, what we're going to do is let me just close this. We have now received files for the rest of the year for this company. So we have the sales data for the remaining 11 months of 2019. We want to see how we can import this quickly within into Power BI using Power the power of Power Query. So we don't need to repeat all the transformations and processes ourselves manually. We can use Power Query to apply those automatically and then we will combine all this data into one table for the sales of 2019. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Now to start let's clean up our file. So what we I want to do is I want to move this January sales also into this uh, folder and also this PBIX the Power Query file also into this folder. Okay and launch this file from here. So we have everything neatly sitting in one folder. So there we have it. This is our table that we imported, the sales data. We can see here in the data view, the data contained inside it. So that's our data set. Now, what we want to do is we want to start working and importing the rest, the data for rest of the months. Now to launch Power Query, we what we can do here is go to Home tab and click on transform data so this will launch power query editor with our existing sort of query within that for january 2019 okay what happened here so we have an error and what has happened here is because we moved the january data file into a folder this query is not able to locate it the, so the source file location has changed so you can't find it on the desktop so it's trying still trying to search it on the desktop we moved it into a folder so what we need to do is go to query settings on right hand side here go to applied steps and the source step there's a gear icon next to it click on the gear icon and this dialog box all we need to do is point it to the new location of the file so Within desktop, we have this folder. In there, we have the January file. So we click on open, click OK. And now this should point to the new file. And we should have, at the end, we should have our data really nicely sort of formatted for us. So there we have it. Now let's look at how we can bring the February 2019 data. So how do we do that? We don't want to create these steps manually. We want to use sort of copy these steps. And for this um, to work in our case where we have all these files for new months coming through, we what we need to do is we will create a copy of this query and then change the source for the query to the other month. And then everything else will be applied automatically. So let's see how we'll do that. So right click in the queries on the left hand side in the queries 
uh, panel, right click on this query and click duplicate. So we are creating a copy of this query. This says January 2019 to, so this is a copy of it. We Let's rename it. We're going to start working with February data. So change this from Jan to Feb so that we know this is February. Now the first thing we want to do is go to the right hand side, query settings, applied steps, the source. So we want to now point to the February data. So go click on the gear icon and in there browse to the February file and click open and click OK. So what we've done is we duplicated the January query and then we have pointed it to sort of renamed it to February and then pointed it to the Feb data. So we can see here if we just quickly look at it, we have all the Feb data coming through. And if we go to the last step, we can see it's nicely formatted and we have all the February data in there. OK, and one thing I want to point out here is the index column. So we added an index column in January data because we realized that the order ID is not unique. So some orders have more than one item. So there are duplicates of order ID. So we created a unique index column. Now, the way it's built, it's going to start from 1001 every time. So February also has from 1001. So this is not ideal. So what we want to do is actually we will combine the data for all the months into one query and then we will build the index column. So instead of having to change this number for every query. So what we're going to do is we go to the January 2019 and we're going to remove the steps of adding the index. So just remove that. And similarly for February, we're going to remove the add index column. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Now, all we need to do is sort of repeat this process of duplicating the query, renaming it to the new month. So in this case, now third month is March. So let's change it to March, bring in March data, go to the source, go to click on gear icon, browse, and then point it to the March text file, select it, click open, click OK. And there we have it. We have our March data imported. It's as easy as that. So now you can quickly go and import the rest of the months. So instead of me doing it manually here and showing it, we're going to use the power of sort of uh, video editing. We're going to do uh, sort of flash forward. And then I will see you once we have imported all the 12 months. So you can pause the video here and then bring in the rest of the months and then will continue with the video. data from January to December 2019. We have all these 12 queries here. Next, what we want to do is we want to combine this data from these 12 queries into one query and one table for sales 2019. How do we do that? Click on sales Gen 2019 query and on the home ribbon towards the right hand side here, you have the combine option and in there we have merge queries and pend queries. I won't go into too much detail, but merge queries is where if you want to bring in one or more columns from another query into a query or a table, that's when you use merge queries. Whereas append queries is when you want to vertically stack together queries. So you want to combine data for all the data from multiple queries into one query. And this append only works if the number of columns and the structure of the queries is identical. Okay, so that is important to keep in mind. So we're going to combine this data. Now, as soon as I've done that append, it says either the dialog box says two tables or three or more tables. And in our case, we have three more tables. So we have 2019 already selected. You can there, it's three, it's already there. To select the rest of the columns, click on Feb here, scroll down to the bottom, and then shift click, basically, to select all the remaining 
tables and then click add so we have Jan to December and now click OK what happened is we have appended the query but we have appended the data into the January 2019 table and that's not what I wanted I can just undo this appended query step and we back to our January data so this is just our January data now okay so what we really want to do is we want to append these but into a new query into a new table how do we do that again click on Jan go append queries there's a drop down here click a click, click on append queries as new and this way now we will be creating a new query so we're going to select three or more tables January is already selected we click on fab scroll down to the bottom shift select add so we have all the queries and tables selected click OK and there we have it we have a new query here in the query pane called append one so let's rename it double click and sales 2019 that's the whole sales data for 2019 okay and in the applied steps there is only source so if you look at the source it will show you that this is coming from appending all these tables or queries okay so there we have it now once we know that we have combined all the data into one sales table um, we don't need to import the data for all the remaining 12 months separately as well into the power bi so power query here we are making connections to the source tables and then once we apply changes all these these tables will be loaded into power bi model but we don't need this Jan to December data separately in each month because we have all the data in one table. So there's an option where we can enable and disable load of a particular table into the Power BI model. How do we do that? You right click on the query. So in this case, January 2019. And if you see here, there's enable load, which is checked at the moment. So if you click on it, it gets unchecked. This message comes up possible data loss warning so we are not using that query in any anywhere within our power bi model yet so just click continue okay and as soon as we do that you can see the name of the query changes into italics okay so there there you have it this is italic so that means it's not being loaded the remaining are still as is so we want to repeat this process of disabling load for all the queries that's that's where we have all these queries unchecked now another thing we can do is we can organize our query pane a bit better so we can create groups so let's create a group of source queries and in here we'll keep these month queries separately but we are not loading this okay so how we can move this we click on one of the queries again shift select shift click on the last one and then click drag and drop into the source queries folder so we have those there and then we can create a new group called data model and we will keep all the queries that we are loading into the model in here so we're going to move sales into data model so there we have it we have our queries nicely organized one last thing so you remember we had an index column in our january and february data we want to again add that index column to the final data strength sales 2019 data so how do we do that we go first make sure this is selected sales 2019 is selected go to the add column ribbon and in there we have index column and then down uh, click on the drop down arrow there and select custom and in here we're going to start from 1001 increment by one and click OK and we have the index sort of column added there we want to bring it to the sort of make it the first column so just drag 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 and there we have it so we have index column added so now our data is ready for importing into power bi data model so go to home we're ready to apply all the changes so click close and apply and this will apply all the changes to the entire data set so it will bring in the data from all the individual queries so you can see here in the load dialog box how it's now actually applying what we did so as we've learned before power query is working on a subset of the data and once we apply all the changes that's when 
the whole transformation everything gets applied to the entire data set and then it gets imported into the power bi data model so here we have it if you look on the right hand side we have sales 2019 in the data view so i've clicked on the data view here on the left and we can see all our data nicely organized here so that's what we wanted to achieve in this particular video in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to start working on building our data model how we can sort of make it efficient from reporting perspective we will use dax to create measures and calculated columns and then in the following video we will look at creating our report the sales report for this abc electronics and then looking at sharing through power bi service so keep on watching keep on following along if you have any questions regarding the contents of this video what we have learned and covered in this particular video leave a comment and i'll respond back to you if you want to get notified regarding the next video then do subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notified and uh, i will see you in the next video so thanks for staying till the end and keep on learning so we have our data imported next video we will look at how we can build our data model use dax to create measures and calculated columns and then we'll use our data model build our sales report for abc electronics and then also look at sharing it through power bi service so thanks for staying till the end if you have any questions regarding what we learned and covered in this video do leave a comment and if you want to get notified regarding the next video then do subscribe and hit the bell icon, bell icon. and uh, i will see you in the next video keep on learning